Uh, uh, my lovely imps, we are about to dive into a very interesting video that was sent to me. It's called Christian Nationalists Haven't... Oh, sorry. It's called They Don't Actually Want a Christian Nation. It is by a channel called Belief It or Not, which I've never actually seen, but I have been recommended multiple times. So I'm finally getting a chance to check out Belief It or Not. Um, and for those who might be new to my channel, I grew up in a uh, hyper-fundamentalist Christian cult. Uh, it was a, uh, a remarkably traumatic experience uh, for me and for my family as a whole. I've talked about it on my channel and I'm actually planning right now to do an updated version of my spiritual deconstruction video. Um, if you take a look over in the chat right now, you will see Somebody is going to type in the link uh, to the spiritual deconstruction video, which is my video talking about my experience growing up in a cult. There it is. It's right there. You can just search Demon Mama Spiritual Deconstruction, or you can click the link right there. Um, and uh, so Christian content, especially stuff discussing Christian nationalism, is very relevant to me and my channel. Uh, I've spent a lot of time talking about religion. I've spent a lot of time talking about the politics of modern uh, hyper evangelical Christianity, um, and uh, uh, and also uh, the church that I grew up in, this this cult that I've mentioned, was um, they didn't call themselves Christian nationalists at the time, but they are a part of the movement that has produced Christian nationalism. They were like proto Christian nationalists, and nowadays they are literally the 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 the, the pastor of the church that I was involved in is working with major Republican groups to promote Christian nationalism all across the country. So this is a pretty important topic to me and I'm very excited to check into this video and share my thoughts on it. And I thought it would be a really good opportunity for us to do that. So uh, if you are uh, interested in that, if you're interested in checking about my other stuff, smack that like button, smack that subscribe button. And without any further ado, let's check out They Don't Actually Want a Christian Nation by Belief It or Not. Let's do this. When I started at Bible college, one of the first things they did was to have us take a test. They assured us that this has nothing to do with grades, they just wanted to see how much incoming students knew about the Bible. So they sit down all these people who either wanted to go into the ministry or whose parents made them take a year of Bible college to get them right with God before going to a real college. And then you have to answer a bunch of questions about the Bible. The questions were mostly about events or people in the Bible, like how many people were on the ark, who was swallowed by a big fish, how many disciples were there, things like that. Now, I went to church my whole life, went to Christian school until grade six, and read my Bible constantly, so I did okay. But, <laughs> but not a lot of people did. Most of the people I talked to were around 15 to 20 percent, and most of them grew up in the church. But that's kind of a reflection of how much evangelical Christians actually know about the Bible. For example, in one study, 33% of evangelicals thought that do unto others as you would have them do unto you was one of the Ten Commandments. And 42% didn't know that Job was in the Bible at all. <laughs> but also, 89% of them thought that the <laughs> That's a good clip. Uh, I've talked about this before on my channel many times. Um, in fact, I even did a, a video called uh, Bible Study with Demon Mama, where we talk about some of the uh, weird hypocritical messaging that is sometimes put out by evangelical Christians or people claiming to be evangelical Christians that show that they just don't actually know all that much about the Bible. I have read the Bible from cover to cover numerous times. Now, it's been quite a few years since my last read through of the Bible, but when I was younger, I was very devout. Um, I took it very seriously to the degree that for most of my life, I strictly held myself to a nightly ritual where I would read at least one chapter of the Bible every single night. And some of those chapters are pretty massive in the Bible. Um, I took religion very seriously when I was young, not just because of the church that I was in, but because I always, uh, I've always had a certain affinity for, uh, for wanting to, to have confidence in the things that I believe, in wanting to chase the truth to its illogical endpoints, um, which interestingly is part of the reason why I ended up leaving Christianity. I stopped being a Christian largely because 
I questioned so deeply and I studied so deeply that it led me away from belief in the long run. Um, but yeah, a lot of, it, I think this is a really strong opener because I, I think it's true that a lot of Christians really don't know the Bible that well. Government should base their laws on the Bible. Hey everybody, uh, thank you so much for liking and subscribing and commenting and all that wonderful stuff that really helps me out. Um, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you. And uh, Jagger's just going to get comfortable here. Palm Dad says, I was raised Catholic. I'm not sure if this is common in other places, but we weren't pushed to read the Bible. It really def depends on the uh, era of Catholicism and the uh, and the regional strain of Catholicism. Some Catholics take personal Bible studies very seriously and others do not. Um, obviously, you know, the further you go back in time with Catholicism, the less that personal Bible studying is recommended by Catholics because at one point it was basically believed that the priesthood was, it, it, their entire purpose was to interpret the Bible for you. Um, but yeah, I think it depends entirely on uh, on you know, where you, you know, what sort of vein of Catholicism you come from. Uh, like I said, I did not grow up Catholic. I grew up fundamentalist evangelical, but yeah. Some Catholics really aren't pushed to read the Bible. I was, uh, in the, in the group, in the group that I grew up in, they were extremely insistent about personal study of the Bible. Yeah, I also put the links down below for the social media and the Patreon. Uh, we just started a new thing. Hopefully it works out where uh, the patrons get a little more say in what the video topics are going to be in the future. So uh, join there and we'll uh, we'll figure out that experiment together. And uh, yeah, thank you. It's, it's not like we don't have Christian nationalism in Canada. The protection of innocent human life from conception until natural death. The defense of personal freedoms to speak and to worship. The commitment to hold our line on spending. These are CHP policies that will never bend nor break, no matter which way the wind is blowing. But boy, does the U.S. love them some Christian nationalism. Uh, we need to be the party of nationalism, and I'm a Christian, and I say it proudly. We should be Christian nationalists. To have some sort of legislation that requires Constitution Alive and biblical citizenship training in our schools, uh, and, and that's how we get things turned around. I didn't know what biblical citizenship was until... Right now, they're showing two of the, like, w sort of uh, fringe right-wing politicians. But you, first of all, you have to remember that both of these, both Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene are elected members of the American Congress. But also, they are not the only ones pushing this. They're just the loudest. We actually watched um, some some just sort of raw footage of Trump rallies and... Uh, a lot of the candidates, a lot of these sort of rank and file Republicans that are speaking at these events will bring up Christian nationalism in their speeches. They just don't do it on national news. They do it at the events where they are in their audience, where they're safe with the people that they're talking about. It's wild. It's it's remarkably common in America to have this sort of belief that 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 the entire political system should be forcibly Christian. Recently... When she said that, I assumed she meant some sort of test of knowledge of the Bible, and I was kind of okay with that because, in my experience, the more you know about the Bible, the less you believe it to be true. But that's not what she meant. Biblical citizenship is about saying, hey, I think the Bible should control the government. Biblical principles are what produce freedom of society, but you won't have biblical principles in society in which you don't have citizens with a biblical worldview. The further we move away from biblical principles, the further we move away from liberty and freedom. Remember, um, that was just the same guy with a slightly different hair color. Am I? I don't want to rewind, but that was just the same guy. That guy looked exactly like his own dad. After the scripture had been hidden for so long and it was brought out and it was read yeah, before the people, right. the people wept with joy that's right. because there's freedom in the law. Right. Oh, that sounds nice. They would come out and read the law and everybody would cry and clap. Like this law. Do not mate different kinds of animals. 
Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. Making love to you was never second best. I think biblical citizenship as a Christian would be stewardship. That God has given us this republic to be stewards over. But what does that mean? What does it mean when people say that the laws should reflect the Bible or we need the Bible to influence how governments are run? Of course, first of all, we think of forced birthers. While many Americans are protesting the decision made in the Supreme Court Friday morning, Jack Hibbs is quietly celebrating. I think it's a great step in the right direction. The founding pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, says... Whoa! The well, there you go. They just name dropped the cult that I grew up in. Calvary Chapel, not that Calvary Chapel, but I, the cult that I grew up in was Calvary Chapel. They are ridiculously extreme. And if you've never been inside of a Calvary Chapel, you do not understand just how extreme they are. They are ridiculously extreme. Overturn of Roe v. Wade is a personal victory. Finding out when I was a young teenager that my uh, mom attempted an abortion, uh, I survived that, uh, has just caused me to love life more. Wait, wait, wait. All right, you didn't have an abortion, you just told him you did. I get that. No, I had an abortion, it just didn't take. <laughs> What does that mean? It means you survived it. You survived the abortion. Even though the Bible doesn't condemn abortion at all. And anti-equal rights stuff. The traditional family, based on the marriage of one man and one woman, is the building block of our communities and the cornerstone of our society. The CHP would restore natural marriage and strengthen the family unit. It's just the way it is. You can't change. Amphi says, when I was 12, my parents took me to a purity conference at Calvary Chapel that told us that girls are biologically designed to get attached after having sex. Oh yeah, that's super commonplace. Uh, I was taught that sort of thing as well. That like, uh, that, that there's like a, basically a biological process that means that women, if you have sex with a woman, she's going to be like in love with you. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. They, they have a completely warped view of reality. Um, there was all kinds of other things. I mean, they taught all kinds of misinformation about masturbation. It was is absurd, the types of stuff that were pushed inside of this church. Nature, and so basically children deserve a mom and a dad. It's only right. But this is about marriage, isn't it? Not every married couple necessarily wants to have children. Pardon? Not every married couple necessarily wants to have children. This is about marriage, not having children. Yeah, okay. I'm here about marriage, about the idea of children deserve a mom and a dad. And of course, prayer in school or prayer in public places. Uh, very another, another very pro-religion decision in one of the most closely watched cases of the term, Jose. This is the case of the coach, the, foot, the assistant football coach out in Bremerton, Washington, who had a habit of praying on the 50-yard line immediately after games. The school district told him that he should not do that. He should find a more private place to do that because people would think that that was somehow the school endorsing his religious views or a particular religion. But today, the Supreme Court ruled six to three in favor of the coach in a decision uh, written by Justice Neil Gorsuch. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Yep, that is another thing. They Christians ignore that line, even though <laughs> It is a prominently featured and very direct commandment from Jesus himself that is ignored. It is ignored in modern America because they believe in evangelism first. They believe in spreading their belief more than they actually believe in the actual figures that they claim to believe in. The growth of their center of power is more important than the belief itself. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And of course, that there will be monuments in public buildings. Well, I can tell you that this monument isn't going anywhere until the legal battle is over, but it's become a big tourist spot so far. You can see people have left flowers here in front of it. And right now, an online petition is circulating, hoping to get all Oklahomans to unite and save it. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. 
But that verse is kind of obscure. Or getting money from the government for... <laughs> But that that's such a good, <laughs> such a good move. It's literally right there. Oh, that is kind somebody of should just no. I or can't say that. Or getting money from the government for themselves. Using that public money to send children to schools that offer religious instruction, saying it wants to avoid subsidizing religion. Today, by a vote of six to three, the Supreme Court said. That oh, by the way. The way the way the Christians, uh, the way that Christians in modern America, the way the evangelical fundamentalists will get around that is they'll mean, they'll say that no, God didn't mean what he said. God meant don't worship any idols. It's okay to have graven, carved representatives of Jesus. It's okay to have carved representatives of symbology from the Bible. He just meant nobody other than him. No, when in actuality, if you study the Bible, there is a consistent through line that you are not supposed to have other representations of God. You are not supposed to to have a depiction of God that, that is acts as a conduit for your faith. Because in truth, you are only worshiping the physical. You are supposed to worship the metaphysical. You are supposed to worship the beyond, the God that is beyond. And of course, they ignore that because as it turns out, being able to sell idols is a very profitable and a way to, to cons consolidate uh, financial uh, or economic and political power. That's religious discrimination. Writing for the majority... Pointing out all this hypocrisy seems pointless. They don't care. No, the point The point here is more than just pointing out the hypocrisy. Uh, of course, there is hypocrisy here, but this isn't just a matter of hypocrisy. It's pointing out that they actually don't they don't actually their belief is not actually based on anything in the book that they're talking about their belief is about political power this late i think that this type of tactic is different than just pointing out a uh, hypocrisy it's a part of a larger argument that lays bare what they actually care about which is consolidating power in a christian faction of republican politics right wing politics it's not about the bible it's not about belief it's not about faith it's about power consolidation it's about a establishment of a very very conservative very very repressive order and i do think that's actually important and educational for people who encounter this Authority Chief Justice John Roberts said Maine promotes stricter separation of church and state than the federal constitution requires. He said once a state offers taxpayer money to benefit public schools, it cannot leave out religious ones. But what about when it's about benefiting other people instead of just themselves? You know, like in the Ten Commandments when it says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But common courtesy, buddy. Oh, that, common that doesn't courtesy. supersede the golden rule. That's the big one. In the campaign for president, I made a commitment. I made a commitment that would provide student debt relief. And I'm honoring that commitment today. Using the authority Congress granted the Department of Education, we will forgive $10,000 in outstanding federal student loans. In addition, students who come from low-income families, which allowed them to qualify to receive a Pell Grant, will have their debt reduced $20,000. And if you lend to those who you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. So should you rejoice when the government makes those people's lives better? Or should you whine and say it's not fair? But for, for our government just to say, you know, okay, well, your debt is completely forgiven. Obviously, they have an agenda for that. They need votes in November. So the timing is a pure coincidence there as well. But it's completely unfair. What a horrible place this is. It's not fair. That's right. It's not fair. <laughs> and taxpayers all over the country, taxpayers that never took out a student loan, Taxpayers that pay their bills and, and, and you know, maybe even never went to college or just hardworking people, they shouldn't have to pay off the great big student loan debt for, for some college student that piled up massive debt going to some Ivy League school. I love how the White House fired back at her. <laughs> yeah, it's okay to have her loans forgiven. See, this is kind of a just a, hip, a, a base hypocrisy argument. 
where obviously conservatives love to be hypocrites. They are all about the, uh, the screw you, I got mine. They love that. They truly love that. Oh, you can't read it because of that outline. Hold on, let me move the overlay. I'll hide the overlay for one second. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene had $183,504 in uh, PPP loans forgiven. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, she had more than any student would ever have forgiven, personally forgiven. Wild. Puerto Rican musician says, I grew up in a prosperity cult. They combined Christianity and Eastern mysticism. A lot of prayer and chanting. It fucked me up for years. That is a, that is a very common thing. And yeah, prosperity gospel is, uh, is, is, even though um, prosperity gospel isn't like the, the number one by name, most of the major uh, Christian movements in America now are, inf are influenced by the prosperity uh, gospel. But not the person struggling to pay their bills. It's very unfair to people that took out loans, worked hard and paid off their loans. It's very unfair to people who took other pathways in life that didn't require them to take out a lot of loans. Mid ball around, everybody took out. They, they made the right decisions, and I, I think that you should be, you should get ruined if you made the bad decisions. I'm mid ball around, and I'm here to talk about Torah. As president, I would make sure that nobody gets anything unfair, and everything is super fair. I love it. I love being a mid ball. Life's not fair, is it, my little friend? For when jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. But he's just a politician, right? He doesn't care what the Bible says. This past November, we launched the Governor's Faith and Community Initiative Office to break down silos between state agencies and civil society. A few weeks ago, I signed into law the strongest pro-life protections in Florida in a generation. And she came to me and she said, okay, uh, where is the fairness for somebody like me who has worked hard and saved and has done the right thing when you talk about discharging student loans? That's not fair. That's not fair at all. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. But I guess she's busy worrying about what a woman is because that's the real biblical message. Can you provide a definition for the word woman? Can I provide a definition? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I can't. You can't? N not in okay. this context. So I'm not a biologist. The meaning of the word woman is so unclear and controversial that you can't give me a definition? And there's also a parable in the Bible where a guy gets his debts canceled by someone and then goes and puts someone else in jail for, for the debt they owed him, which is supposed to represent how God forgave us and we're supposed to forgive others. Like in the Lord's Prayer where it says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But don't worry, there is a way around that. He says, conservative Christians are fully enraged at student loan forgiveness, missing the irony that their entire profess religion is based on the idea of a canceled debt so really he just kind of took that from the viral meme and tried to uh, make it his own he also then followed up with a tweet saying that um this is like israel's year of jubilee the year of jubilee in ancient israel was a celebration that occurred every 50 years some people are saying that it was every seven years it was not every seven years that's a sabbatical year which was um uh, similar but not okay. the same Okay, but it did involve forgiving debts, and it was a law created by God. So, Jubilee every 50 years in which God requires people to absolve all debts, to free prisoners, release slaves, VeggieTales creator, podcaster, and podcaster Phil Vischer also seems to agree with that take. There were several. It's a, oh yeah, I forgot that in recent memory, the the Veggie Tales creator has been has made enemies in the Christian movement for being too Christian. I'm not kidding you. The VeggieTales guy has like enemy, genuine enemies in the Christian nationalist movement because he's unironically more biblical than they are. Not tonight, flashy job. Several iterations of these 
kinds of arguments on Twitter from Christians saying, you know, this is basically the entirety of Christianity. And so, of course, you have to support student loan debts. Those Christian conservatives, they're just selfish. They just don't want to help people out. This is basically the gospel. That's actually true. Yes, conservative Christians are selfish and conservative Christians do value mammon, money, the way of man more than they value their religiosity. It's more than they value their faith. In fact, conservative Christianity is a Christian flavored money cult in the modern era. Um, I talked, I, I've talked again, I talked about this with regard to the church that I grew up in, um, which had uh, uh, merchandising, merchandising, advertisements, bookstores, uh, uh, food sales. They sold their DVDs. They sold their videos. They had a radio station, a monetized radio station. They're all about money. They love consolidating financial power. Comparisons show a total misunderstanding of both scripture, even the gospel itself, and what student loan debt forgiveness is, which, as we already explained, is the forced transfer of wealth from one group to another. Oh, it's forced, and that's the issue. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to one who asks and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. That is not what the gospel is. In the gospel, Jesus, God made flesh. See, stuff like this isn't just isn't pointing out hypocrisy. Stuff like this is showing what the actual Christian belief is and is pointing out what these people are saying it is. This is exposing their lies about the Christian belief system. Yes, there are some parts of this video that have focused on hypocrisy, but most of this video has basically been a Christian debunk of the modern Christian movement. The modern Christian movement being... Um, so deeply corrupted and obsessed with monetary power that it doesn't resemble the belief system that is outlined in the Bible whatsoever. Um, and it's not easy. I mean, it's not hard to find that out for yourself. A the, the New Testament is not a large read, but even if you spend your time and just take time as a Christian or as a non-Christian and read the Gospels, you will find that in the Gospels, <laughs> is a refutation of the entirety of the modern Christian conservative movement. Basically, every tenant of the modern Christian conservative, uh, Christian nationalist movement is outright rejected by God, by, by Jesus and his disciples themselves. They, they denounce the way that this entire movement behaves. Terribly paid our debt, which is our sin, on our behalf through his death on a cross. And this is what Colossians 2, 13 through 14 says. God made us alive together with him, canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. How did he cancel that? It didn't just go away. He satisfied that demand. He paid that price that we could not pay. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. It was a debt that none of us could pay ever. None of us can pay. When it comes to student loans, people pay off their student loans because they can, and that's what they sign up to, and that's a commitment they make. When it comes to our sins, that's a debt we could never pay. Plus, well, well, that's ridiculous. This is so foolish, and also it this is this is arguably blasphemous. What this guy right here is saying, this argument that this Michael Brown guy is making, is saying that God is an idiot. That God set a debt deliberately to entrap people, which if you're an atheist is a pretty easy argument to make, but within the Christian framework is blasphemous. What a fool. Jesus died for the sins of all humanity, not for some here and some there. All right. So that comparison breaks down as well. And what about other issues like immigration? Immigrants. I knew it was them. Even when it was the bears, I knew it was them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself. Apart, apart from the language, whatever it was, the president was 100% correct in his policy on merit-based immigration. You know, at our church, we welcome people of all races, all backgrounds, whether they have anything to contribute to our church or not. But America is not a church. I do agree very much that America is not a church which is why gay people are allowed to have jobs there. 
It is a country that has the right and the responsibility to regulate who comes into this country based on what they have to offer the country. And thank God, Lou, we have a president in Donald Trump who realizes he has both a biblical... This man is weak in his faith. Absolutely weak in his faith. Oh, God's law, the law of the almighty God only applies selectively? Weak. And a constitutional responsibility to put the interest of America above the interest of any and every other country in the world. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. And furthermore, our founders believed that our success as a nation depended upon our faithfulness to God's eternal word. <laughs> you want to pick on immigrants? Then pick on Willie! Willie, please. The children want to pick on someone their own size. Ugh. But we also understand that every nation has to have a, a set of laws on immigration. One of my frustrations right now is that just in the last 24 hours, I've seen in almost every newspaper an article saying that the uh, enforcement of immigration laws is going to cause very real human pain. Well, of course it will. I mean, in other words, saying no to anyone for any reason is going to cause a very real uh, pain. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with others justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place, in this land I give your ancestors forever and ever. And evangelicals love using things that were said to Jeremiah as if it's being said to them. So why aren't they listening to this one? And, uh, and especially a nation that has not enforced its immigration laws, or certainly with any consistency, or for that matter, sanity, for, uh, for, for a generation is, uh, is in a very bad position now all of a sudden to say, you know, we're going, to, we're going to apply these laws. But a nation that doesn't have sane laws and doesn't expect those laws to be enforced and respected you know, won't long be a nation. So we've got to respect that the nation has a responsibility. The government has- It's also super funny that so many Christians have latched on to nationalism whatsoever, even though once again, the Bible itself over and over and over again is a refutation of nationalism. Um, Jesus, and the disciples who wrote uh, uh, expanding upon the words of Jesus explicitly call for, for, for foregoing earthly boundaries. As a Christian, you are supposed to be in fellowship with all Christians, with all believers, with all of those in God, and you are supposed to have compassion towards all non-believers. You are supposed to see, dissolve the borders between people that are created by man and therefore created ultimately influenced by sin and 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 satan uh you are supposed to reject these things you are supposed to look beyond them and ignore these boundaries i mean he even goes so far as to say render unto caesar what is caesar's that telling people this money was not made by you for you give back to caesar what is his and focus on what matters creating and working to create to bring about the kingdom of god responsibility and christians should be a part of that conversation about where those lines should be drawn, where the, uh, the guidelines should be set, how citizenship should be recognized, and, uh, and what kind of immigration and refugee policy uh, should be put in place that is responsible for the nation, that is, that is faithful to American principles, American ideals, and, uh, and to our government's responsibility to protect and even to define the nation. That's very I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. You're being here, Dr. Jeffers, first to you. An illegal immigrant shows up at your church. He's hungry, he needs help. Maybe he has a child with him, and you're gonna call uh, ICE and turn him in? Well, look, we're not going to check the immigration status of people who attend our church, but we're also not going to harbor illegal immigrants who are criminals like some of these churches are doing. Look, a lot of these liberal church Jesus would have. Jesus would have hidden the immigrant. Jesus would have turned away the ICE officials. Weak. Churches that harbor illegal immigrants who are criminals say they're following the example of Jesus. The only problem. You want to know who else was a criminal? Jesus. 
Jesus was a criminal. He was a criminal by the law of two separate nations. He was a a criminal by the by the law of the Pharisees. He was a criminal by the law of the Romans. He was killed for being a criminal. Do you think that he cares? What this is a literal does, do you give a do you care about law? You think God cares about the law of man? These people are weak. They're so weak is they're following the Jesus of their imagination rather than the Jesus of the Bible. Look, Jesus was not this wimpy little guy who walked around munching sunflower seeds and saying nice things to people. The real Jesus of the Bible said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. That is, obey the government. God that is not what that meant. That is not what that meant. Obey the government. No, it meant you should not bother yourself with the laws of man. Caesar made the money. He printed his face on the money. Don't worship and obsess over the money. It is Caesar's. If Caesar wishes for his money back, give it to him and otherwise continue being a Christian. This, these people are so unbelievably pathetic. It's unbelievable. It, it's just, it's breathtaking. It's breathtaking how dishonest, how far from the actual belief system that they thump. The book that they use to justify their entire existence is nothing to them. They stomp on the face of God. God is no respecter of people or nations. The nation that reverences God will be blessed by God. The nation that rejects God will be rejected by God. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did not do for me. But what about people who didn't enter your country illegally, or people who have always been Americans, but are just struggling? For example, and playing for comic relief. And that doesn't exist anymore. Comedy is very much alive, as are homeless people. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourself with money bags that do not grow old, with treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So sure. Yes, nation isn't a direct translation because the concept of a nation didn't exist at that point in history. There was no concept of a nation. Um, uh, na nations are a are a a modern development. They the concept of a nation came about in relatively recent history, um, and some translations sort of use that word now because of what we understand it as colloquial. But that not that is not the words that would have been chosen at the time because that concept didn't exist. Really, you want your Christian nation to be helping the poor, right? Like right now, what do we call it when? Somebody has money and the government takes it and then gives it to everybody else. We call it socialism. We call it redistribution. The Bible calls it stealing. For there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy, to the poor in your land. And what that is, is, well, we need to be generous. Well, then be generous. But don't vote somebody to steal my money. This guy's got a, a, got a Rolex wrapped around his wrist. As he, as he gives this speech. Give it away, that's not generosity, that's Judas Iscariot. You're taking money don't belong to you and giving it away. What? Everything he called as far as helping the poor, the Matthew 5, essentially, the yeah. Sermon on the Mount, yeah. the charge for us Christians, it starts and ends with the individual calling, not the collective calling. It's mm. super important that you can't abdicate your own responsibility. Fallen Arrow asks, whose video is this? We are currently reacting to and commenting on the channel, Believe It or Not. Uh, and the video title is, They Don't Actually Want a Christian Nation. So far, this has been an absolutely fantastic video. And if you have enjoyed my commentary, uh, you should consider subscribing to Demon Mama. Press subscribe on YouTube, press like, and also consider either contributing to me on my website, demonmama.com, or joining my Patreon if you want to help support this channel. My channel is free to the public and 100% viewer supported. So if you wanna throw a few bucks into the tip jar, if you wanna toss a few bucks into the proverbial guitar case, it would be deeply appreciated. But most of all, I would love it if you would join us 
by pressing subscribe and becoming an imp. Uh, and if, of course, if you're enjoying this video that we're reacting to, you want to check out the channel Believe It or Not, uh, who we are reacting to right now. I was recommended this video, and it's been very good so far. Um, can't you put the name video title below the URL in the inset view thing? I could, but it's not very useful because nobody's going to type that in. But what I can do is I can drop it right here. Bam. There you go. Let's continue. To somebody else, to some other authority except yourself. Hmm. You yourself give up your cloak and your tunic. You yourself turn the other cheek. Now that's hard because you want to give up that kind of, oh no, no, it's somebody else's response. Yeah, by the way, once again, uh, Charlie Kirk loaded. The dude is loaded. This guy is not exactly spending his time selling his tunic to give to the poor. Instead, you'll note, what he is is traveling around the country building a financial and political alliance of Christians who are interested in political domination. They're not interested in following the words of God. They are not interested in uh, building the kingdom of heaven on earth. Instead, they are interested in building a kingdom for themselves. They are interested in dominating the people of America with their uh, let's just call them extremely corrupted and distorted views. Basically, they are like a less cool and less sexy, uh, uh, like uh, like eldritch cult. Uh, they worship uh, a, a power that is incomprehensible to most, and they dress it in the skin of Jesus Christ. By the way, Han Hannah Angelina, thank you very, very much for supporting the channel. Deeply appreciate the $10 super chat. Thank you very, very much, Hannah Angelina. You have helped make this show possible tonight. Thank you very, very much. Let's continue. Responsibility. No, no, no. You go help the poor individual that needs to be clothed, that needs to be fed, that needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. That's a call of individual, of individual um, of responsibility. The book of Leviticus in the Bible was the law of the land. And Christians believe that God gave Israel this law directly. And it said, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest, and you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. But even though we want a Christian nation that follows the Bible, helping the poor would be socialism, so we can't do it. Part of the problem with socialism as well is it disincentivizes productivity and reward. And it turns people into victims. And some people are victims, but sometimes what happens is when we take on the posture of a victim, now you need to go out and get money or power from someone else and give it to me. But that doesn't mean that you're necessarily earning it and or a good steward of it. If the rich aren't doing bad things, illegal things, hurting people, causing them to have poor wages and starve, God doesn't like that. But God most certainly is okay with different strata in society. There are rich and poor. Some are born into rich families. His sovereignty. Hmm. Interesting. Almost like this guy right here, this guy is is preaching a Christianity that disregards Christ, that disregards the Bible, and instead is pushing an agenda of hierarchy and domination that is in service of justifying the existing status quo. Do you see what I mean about why videos like this are helpful? These videos demystify the language of Christianity. They tear off the mask of Christianity to reveal the actual project operating under the modern evangelical Christian movement, under the modern fundamentalist movement, which has absolutely nothing to do with a genuinely practiced religion and has everything to do with building a system, building and maintaining a system of domination tells us that. Some are born into poor. The issue isn't, is God okay with that? The question is, how do we behave in our strata? It's typical for us to look at the rich people and go, hey, don't be treating the poor people that way. But we also need to remember, sinning can go the opposite direction. And if poor people are sinfully coveting and demanding, hey, the stuff that you legally earned, I want some of that government. Get it for me. That's called stealing. That's called sinning. Let wow, that is a hot take. It's a sin to abuse the poor, but also it's a sin to ask for help. So 
And then there are those people who feel that even if they don't do anything, don't work at all, the government still owes them money because they exist, because they breathe, and because in their minds they're worthy. I don't know how to take advantage of government programs. But if you don't want the government to help the poor because that's the church's job, uh, is the church doing that? I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of churches do help the poor, but also there's churches uh, like where this guy's from. I'm not sure that the church's main focus and goal is to alleviate poverty. So the church is the, the one institution that will preach and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in a sense, I don't want the church to become distracted um, with meeting physical needs sort of in a vacuum or, or uh, by itself. <laughs> okay, then if it's not the church, then it's the people in the church that have to help the poor because the Bible does say you have to. Good. Hey, so this is a great illustration because that would be a verse you would easily use that you should always give money to anybody who asks of you. But we've talked about on here before that what you got to do is learn to read the Bible correctly, right? And so part of reading the Bible correctly is you take every verse in context. So you got, was that a Bible? Did you have your Bible open there where you read it? This was an iPad, a digital version. Okay, so you just pulled 630 out. Boom, right and there. that's exactly what the guys in the street corner might do. If you look at Luke 631, the very next verse, it tells you to treat others the way you want them to treat you. And so here's my question. Wow. That is, that is mental gymnastics of a next level. Next level mental gymnastics. So Rick, do you want people to enable an irresponsible lifestyle in you? <clears throat> Jager, I'm gonna go take a break. <clears throat> But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? But, you know, just giving people stuff doesn't always help. In fact, sometimes it hurts. There's a book out there called When Helping Hurts. Mm. And they point out that quite frequently throwing money at... Oh, thank God there's a book out there that is titled something that I think is useful here. Something can be counterproductive because it makes people dependent. We know this in the welfare system, right? Yeah. If we don't force people ultimately... Puerto Rican musician says this is kind of an illustration of the difference between uh, groups like black emancipatory Christianity and white supremacist Christians. Unironically, it is. This is like you you can actually see a, a, a very strict difference in the way that the Bible is used between things like liberation theology, between Christian socialists, between black emancipation Christianity versus the white supremacist, hyper conservative, fundamentalist, Christian nationalist Christianity. Um, they are completely and utterly different beliefs. They are ostensibly based on the same books, but as we are seeing here, uh, the white supremacist uh, uh, Christian nationalist vein of Christianity does not actually care about the contents of the book that they spend so much time talking about. They will bend it however they see fit. Who are able-bodied to go to work, they, be, they tend to become dependent. We, do, we, we actually, we're not doing them favors. We are degrading their character. We're degrading their work ethic mm -hmm. by giving them basically a... a, a a, a drug of money to say, right. well, look, look, I'm gonna, I can kick back now. I don't need to do work because somebody's gonna do it for me. That does no favors for developing that individual. It actually turns that individual in a depend, into a dependent and that it's not good for the individual or the family. I mean, even if that's 100% true and a ton of research has been done to show that you are right, it's still not what your Bible says to do. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And Frank, by the way, every single one of these so-called Christians here, if there, if the God of the Bible does exist, he will condemn them to hell with no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, I mean, 
there is there can be no uh, no no doubt about the fact of, of when God says that if you are a lukewarm Christian, if you don't take your beliefs seriously, if you don't believe honestly, you will be spit out from the mouth of God. Disgusting to God is these types of people. And that's why the book that they ostensibly believe in, they will be condemned. They will be spat out of the mouth of God. Inc. You have made a living denying things that show the Bible to have errors. Why do you make an exception here? Uh, we were, one time, there was a pastor in town that was seeing the church and spending some time with me. And we were going to my home and we passed a, a very large home. Not in my neighborhood, but a very, on the way to my neighborhood. We passed this big old house, on, uh, you know, with land and a pond and all this stuff. And uh, this guy said to me, look at that house. And I said, yeah, uh, that's actually one of our members. And uh, he's, a, he's a really generous person. And the guy, the pastor went like this, <laughs> like that. When I said he's a generous person, he said, <laughs> he said, he ought to sell that and give it to the poor. <laughs> and I decided that I needed to minister to him. <laughs> and so I said to him, you don't care about the poor. And he said, what? Because remember that Judah said that and it said, this he said, not that he cared for the poor. I said, you don't care about the poor. He said, what? I said, you don't care about the poor because if you cared about the poor, you'd sell your house and give it to the poor. And by the way, I said, the one who made that statement up was Judas, the one who betrayed our Lord. This is so good. Yes, Judas demanded one thing be sold and given to the poor. But Jesus also said to sell everything and give it to the poor. So I guess the rule is that if Judas and Jesus both said the same thing, uh, it cancels out? Like, like when two people have the same word in categories? Ernie, don't take the game. It's my categories and I'm going home. We, uh, you know, we have worked with people in a local homeless shelter in, in our church. And many of those folks would have laptop computers, phones. This guy has the same like uh, physical energy and appearance as Matt Walsh. And I just gotta say, there's a certain type of person that tries to build the Matt Walsh look and they are not a good type of person. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I feel like this guy probably watches an endless amount of Matt Walsh and just decided to crib his style and look entirely, but he also has the fucking hollowed out, empty eyes of Matt Walsh. Uh, you know, they have three meals a day, you know, air conditioned spaces, things like that. So by my standards, I wouldn't want to trade places with them, right? I think of them as poor, right? But by a you know, sort of global standard, they're living at a sort of quality of life far above what most people in the world you know, actually live uh, in, and so it kind of redefines. But they're but they're they're poor. They're actually experiencing that sort of alienation and other things. Right, just having access to air conditioning doesn't solve their sort of deeper problems. They need the, they need the gospel. They're not as in need. Look, it's the same guy as the super fan, the Homelander super fan, in uh, in in the boys. You guys remember this character? Anybody who's watched The Boys, the Homelander super fan guy, who's like also does like a pathetic uh, uh, cuck podcast on the internet where he basically just sucks off Homelander all day, every day on the internet. It's literally the same guy. There's someone else, so therefore we'll just tell them about the Lord. Can you imagine volunteering once and seeing that the place has AC and that some people have laptops, probably so they can apply for jobs, and your response to seeing that is to say, Eh, maybe we don't help people in need. I remember talking to one man. We were distributing food and handing out flyers for one of our Spanish language church plants. And uh, I met a man, and I don't speak Spanish. You know I don't speak Spanish. In English, please. But I was with a, a, a man who could translate. And as we began to talk with him, uh, he told us that he hadn't eaten for about two and a half days. And um, as we began to talk, you know, he, he made it clear that he actually wasn't really all that bothered by it because he was pretty used to it from back home. And in fact, the reason why he hadn't eaten is because he had sent all of his money back home, uh, all the money that he was making. And so uh, he just hadn't made enough recently to provide for himself. Uh, but he's actually, he was quite joyful and thought this is as, as good as he'd ever really had it in his life. And so those, those different interactions have kind of helped me realize maybe our understanding of poverty is a little bit, um, you know, too tied into just access to resources. 
so you met a guy that hadn't eaten in two days, but he was used to it. So now you don't give to the poor? All this to say that no, these Christian nationalists and evangelical Christians don't want a nation that follows the Bible or follows Christ's words. They want power. They want to decide who to oppress. They want to be able to exclude who they want to exclude while getting what they want. What they don't want is a society that cares about people, where people who are hungry are fed, people who are thirsty are given something to drink, where strangers are invited in, where people who need clothes are given clothes, where the people who are sick are looked after, and where people in prison are visited. You can say that, hey, these are my political beliefs, but don't say it's because of the Bible. Thanks, everybody, for making it this far. If you know somebody who will benefit from it, send it their way. And as always, you're wonderful. I like you. And uh, keep up the good work. And uh, Jagger says, uh, have a good day. Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs> That was an excellent video. What a great channel. Once again, the channel was Believe It or Not. I have never seen this channel before. This is my first time seeing this channel and I absolutely love that video. I think it was an incredibly effective video at pointing out that Christian nationalism has literally nothing to do with Christianity. It has absolutely nothing to do with Christian values. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Um, and we should be clear about that. Uh, this should be pointed out as often as possible because the, the, the more that you force the Christian nationalists to reveal their true, uh, their true goals, which is domination, political domination. They want to rule an earthly kingdom. They do not have any spiritual motivation. Um, then it becomes more apparent to other people, uh, uh, people who are likely to believe people at their face value, people who are likely to say, oh, well, you know, if your beliefs tell you one thing, you must have a genuinely held Christian belief. You must have a genuinely held religious belief. But it's not about that. It is simple. And uh, it is, is brutish and simple political uh, uh, political domination. That is all that it is. It is an attempt to use God as a tool to control the behaviors of other people, never to actually um, live up to any sort of value, a spiritual value. It is simply, plain and simple, the domination of one type of people over another in service of a, a perceived social order. Anyway, fantastic video. Uh, couldn't be more happy with how that video went. Really, really found that a, a uh, uh, an informative and interesting video. I hope you all liked it as well. Um, that's basically all I have to say about this. I think I made my case relatively well. If you enjoyed watching this, smack that subscribe button and consider checking out more stuff over from Believe It or Not. I certainly am going to, um, but I'd love to have you join us here. We talk about all kinds of issues like this all the time. So press like, press subscribe, and thank you for being my lovely, lovely imps.